I don't think artificial general intelligence, AGI, is imminent, but I think it's possible. The intelligence that we have right now can't really reason, can't stick to facts. It does what we call hallucinations, makes stuff up all the time. Real artificial intelligence, or AGI, is not going to do that stuff. It will actually be able to reason. It will be able to keep track of the world. It won't invent stuff arbitrarily. That might be a decade away. It might be two decades away. I think it will happen this century, but we're not that close to it. Now, even if you had it, we don't necessarily face extinction risk. It doesn't follow like night follows day that if you have a smart machine that we're in jeopardy. You know, none of the machines that we've ever built are particularly interested in human territory, for example. You know, Go has got, the machine Go has gotten much better, but the systems aren't fighting us for territory, things like that. Um, it doesn't go around killing all the Go players. <laughs> it doesn't go around killing all the Go players. It doesn't even know that there are Go players, right? It just knows about this board. It's a real speculation to say that machines are ever going to have any interest uh, in us in that sense. I wouldn't say it's impossible. Jeff Hinton said it's not inconceivable, and I think that's right. But I think what we should really be worried about is what are bad actors going to do with these technologies? You know, we know we have bad humans that want to seize territory, enslave people or whatever. And so we should be watching out for what people want to do with these machines and not worrying so much about like the Skynet scenario. We should have some people thinking about it. I'm not saying we should dismiss it altogether, <coughs> but I don't think it's our immediate worry. Kai-Fu Lee came out with a book uh, a year or so ago, maybe even more now. Actually, it's a few years old now, AI Superpowers, about China and the U.S. competing on AI. Uh, he suggested that China had a couple of structural advantages in terms of access to more data because it's kind of a top-down environment, not a lot of privacy uh, uh, over there. And so they could um, crunch numbers at higher orders of magnitude, uh, come up with better algorithms, and uh, that was uh, – they also had support from the government on a scale that the U.S. Uh, does not. So those were two structural advantages he cited for China – uh, there is some anxiety that if um, one country or another develops uh, superiority in AI, that this could be worth hundreds of billions of dollars, which you're starting to see. You're starting to see some of the repercussions in the stock market, just for fun, because you've been in the space for a long time. Uh, did you buy NVIDIA stock uh, a little while ago? Because I will say I did not. <laughs> no, I, I did not. I should have. I, I've been impressed yeah. with Jensen for a long time, and I should have. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you'd have your sense of what the heck is coming um, more so than just about anyone. Um, but you're seeing something like NVIDIA get hundreds of billions of dollars because now they're regarded as the core chip manufacturer for uh, developing AI. Let me lay a stat on you, and then I'll come back to the Kaifu stuff. Um, Microsoft just put out a stock analysis, I forget what we call it, um, <clears throat> forecast, they, they predicted that uh, GPT-4 and so forth, large language models would add about $10 billion a year to their revenue. And like, that's a lot of money, you know, to me or you, but to them, it's not actually that much money. The people making the most money off the AI revolution right now are the chip manufacturers or really one. It, it's Jensen uh, at NVIDIA. Um, making money off the dream that this stuff is going to affect the world. But so far, large language models, although they're extremely popular, have not actually led to that much material revenue. People are using them to program computers. There's money in that, but there's not an enormous amount. They're using it for search engine optimization. There's a lot of experimenting, but it's not clear how much money there is in a technology that's fundamentally unreliable. It's interesting. J.P. Morgan has banned consumer-facing use of chatbots. Apple just did the same. Like Some of the big companies are waking up to the fact that even though this AI has been really hyped, it, it doesn't necessarily work that well. So how much revenue there actually comes is not clear. And then like, I'll go back to Kai-Fu Lee. Um, Kai-Fu is certainly right that there is a race on to get to AI or to artificial general intelligence. I don't think we're actually that close. There's a lot of worry over here that if, if we um, you know, allow China to get to GPT-5 before us that somehow the world will change in radical ways that I think is silly. You know, GPT-5 will be better than GPT-4. It will write better boilerplate text, but it's not going to invent interstellar travel or, 
you know, redefine reality in some fundamental way. If China did get to GPT-5 six months before the United States, it's not clear it would have that much consequence. It probably raised their GDP a little, which they could kind of use right now. They're struggling a little bit. Um, but it, it's not going to fundamentally change science. Here's an example I give. GPT-4 sees a lot of games of chess in its database. It sees the rules of chess, and it still does things like have bishops jump over rooks. Like it does not understand chess. If you want to have a system that doesn't understand chess, now design a spaceship for you, good luck. It's not really going to work. Like people are attributing a kind of general intelligence to these systems that they don't really have. So somebody may eventually win the race to AGI, but nobody is close. So it's not the immediate concern that I think a lot of people in both nations think that it is. And, you know, there are now battles over chips and, and export controls and, and stuff like that. I think partly premised on the idea that GPT-5 is going to be this magical thing. It's not really. I, I wrote this um, essay called What to Expect When You're Expecting GPT-4 around Christmas before GPT-4 came out. And I said, people's minds are going to be blown, but as they dig in, they're going to realize that it's still flawed, that it still hallucinates, that it still doesn't understand the world, etc. And all of these predictions, I had seven predictions, they were all correct. And they boiled down in some way to saying, four will be better, but it's not going to be magic the way that people initially think that it is. Same thing's going to happen with five. Hey, YouTube, glad you're enjoying the podcast. If you really like it, hit subscribe, and then YouTube will notify you every time we have a bang-up new guest. Thank you.